David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. What I have for you today is something that I feel will be a bit polarizing. It's something that some of you will find very appealing, but some of you might feel differently. But whether or not this pen is in your wheelhouse, I think that you will at least find an overview of this unique creation to be interesting. The pen is from Leo Design, and it is called the FPX-1. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the FPX-1, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Leo Design for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, they've also sent along some of their other product offerings, which I'll give you a peek at as well during the writing sample. Uh, Leo Design is a company based out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, Leo is spelled L-I-O-E. Uh, it is run by the husband and wife team of John and Jailu Leo, uh, as well as their dog, Cardi B, who was one of the very well-behaved pups at the San Francisco show where I first met John and Jailu and learned more about their brand and their products. John is an industrial designer who has been inspired by the idea that things don't have to function and look and feel the way they are today. Uh, he uses aviation as an inspiration behind many of his designs. Uh, there is a great deal of progression in design and evolution in the ways we feel a plane should look and feel, and John wants to translate that to his unique and modern designs. Okay, Enough backstory, let's actually take a look at the pen. The pen arrives in this very secure Nanic 903 case. Uh, Nanic is the name of the company who makes these. Uh, it's not an exclusive case for this pen. Uh, it's something that's commercially available. Uh, something that I thought was neat about these cases is they are airtight and there is a little automatic pressure release valve here in the front. So if you're trekking in high altitude changes, the pressure on the inside and the outside of this case stays constant. There are a couple of latches on the side that open up. And then inside we have a carrying case for this pen. Now, this carrying case is an essential part of this pen for reasons that you'll understand here in a bit. It kind of reminds me of an ammunition clip from an automatic weapon. Uh, but then the exterior has these grooved lines that remind me of the design on Eddie Van Halen's famous Frankenstrat guitar. Um, I believe this is made from a rather hefty aluminum. It does have some weight to it. The top is affixed via magnet and comes off to reveal this inner sleeve, uh, which appears to be 3D printed. Uh, the red is the pen peeking out there. And then the pen slides out. And here is the Leo Design FPX-1. Uh, this is a limited edition. There will only be 10 of these pens made. Um, as you can see, this is a very uniquely designed pen. Uh, there's some things that I really like about this design and the functionality of the pen. And then there's some areas of concern for me as well. And I'll get to both of those here in a bit. The pen is made from a solid piece of 6061T6 aluminum. Uh, that is a very commonly used and versatile aluminum alloy. Uh, it is anodized black with a single red element. Um, I'll give you a closer look at it during the writing sample, but the pen has a bit of a tapered design similar to that of an airplane wing. Um, let's take a look at the end of the barrel. Uh, this red piece has the look of a knock, but it isn't one. Uh, it is, however, an important piece to this pen. Uh, it's basically a part of the mechanism that's holding the pen together. Um, it works in conjunction with this piece right here, which is actually a pen. And I'll show you how this all works during the writing sample and how to disassemble this pen for inking. Uh, it's rather simple but functional design. Uh, below that is the company name Leo. Um, you know, I kind of wish that this was printed in the opposite direction. If you are right-handed when you are using this pen and you look down, the lettering is upside down. Now, if you're a lefty, then the graphic is in a, a more pre-readable position. Uh, then we have three alternating trapezoid windows. Um, I like this part of the design because each window has something a little bit different in it. In the first window, you have the red piece, which holds the nib unit in place. 
Uh, between the first and second window, you can see the spring. Then in the second window, you can see the converter and a bit of your ink situation. And then in the last window, you see the solid housing for the nib. Um, I like the variety here. Though with the converter used in this pen, the majority of the ink is covered up by the housing and you only see a very little of it. So I wish that you could see more of the ink there so uh, you could see a little bit more of what your true ink situation is. Uh, then we have the nib. The nib and housing and converter used in this pen are all from a pilot vanishing point. While I have always thought the Pilot Vanishing Point nib looks nice when it protrudes slightly from a VP, viewing the entire thin nib isn't the most aesthetically pleasing in my opinion, but I will say that it's the correct nib size for this particular pen. Uh, this pen would have looked rather awkward if it had a standard Yovo number 6 on here or something like that. It wouldn't have looked right. It's not specified on the Leo site, but I am going under the assumption that you can have this pen equipped with uh, any vanishing point nib that you would like. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, this pen was inked when I took these pictures, so it's not pristinely clean. Uh, my biggest concern about this overall design is that the nib does not retract. Uh, this means in, that you need to keep the pen inside the case, and then in order to use it, you need to take it out of the carrying case. And then when you're done, it goes back in the carrying case. Now, that's also the case with a desk pen, but with those, you're typically just removing the pen from its stand and then returning it to its stand, as opposed to this pen where you need to remove the cap, pull it out, and then once you're done, it goes back in and you got to put the cap back on. Um, I will say that in my testing, the case has done a good job of protecting the nib and preventing it from drying out. Uh, but this isn't a pen that you can just leave sitting out outside of its case on your desk. Um, another thing is that with this tall, slender case, even though it's rather hefty, you basically need to keep it lying down sideways on your desk rather than standing upright. You know, I typically like to store my ink pens upright, but with this case, uh, while it's fairly stable, I'd be concerned about bumping it and having it topple over. Um, you know, I do like the feeling of this pen when it's in my, your hand. Um, it's very uh, abnormal in regard to it's just a non-standard section, but the form of the wing design fits the contours of my hand nicely. Um, and the edges of the open window are smooth enough that they're not uncomfortable against the inner part of my hand. So what do I really like about this pen? Um, it is an attention grabbing pen. I think the overall looks of this pen are really sharp. Um, it's something that definitely makes a statement in the hand. And I really care for the uniqueness of the overall design and presentation. Um, I like the different looks that each of the three windows provide. Um, as far as things that I don't care for as much, um, I really wish the nib retracted or there was some kind of cap so that you could carry this pen around. In its current state, the pen is not that portable. Having to carry around that hefty case is going to get really old fast. Uh, and a more kind of desk-friendly stand-up case would have been nice as well. Uh, the FPX1 is only available through the Leo Design website and retails for $985. As I mentioned before, this will be a limited run of 10 pens. Uh, this is not a pen for everyone, but it certainly isn't boring. Uh, there will be a link in the notes below where you can check out this pen on the Leo Design site, as well as see some of the other products they have to offer, which are also unique, and most of which are priced under $100. In a second, I'll give you a look at their Stealth Pen, which is a rollerball, as well as a pair of scissors, unlike anything you've ever seen. Okay. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample, as well as lo a look at those additional products. In regard to weights and measurements for this pen, uh, the pen itself comes in at just over 30 grams, about 30 and a half. And then in regard to measurements, it really doesn't come, you know, kind of lend itself to normal measurements. So we'll just say how long it is. And it's 152.6 millimeters long. Okay, I mentioned I would show you a couple of additional Leo Design products, and the first one is the Stealth Pen. Uh, this was something they released a while back, uh, and it's a really nice ballpoint. Uh, it does have some similar elements of design to the FPX1. Um, now, I will say that it is very comfortable in the hand, uh, but the placement of this piece here 
uh, next to the knot was a little awkward for me just because my first inclination was to go up here and depress it and you couldn't because it's in the way. So I will say that when you are using this, you have to just kind of twist it to the side in order to activate the knock. And so you just have to kind of get used to that motion of twisting it to the side in order to activate it. But it's a very nice rollerball pen. And next up is something truly unique, which is the Phantom S420 scissors. Um, I like the looks of this. It's really sharp. Uh, and I like kind of like the looks of how one side has a different look than the other side when it comes to these scissors. Uh, it also comes with a little stand. And so it stands up like this. Let me set that on the side so it stands up like this on your desk. And so I think that that's kind of a nice item to have on your desk because that is kind of an attention grabbing item to be sitting there and something that's useful. Let's go ahead and cut. You know, I will say it's not the smoothest of action. Uh, it does cut and does get the job done, but it's not necessarily like butter smooth when you're cutting it. But I do think it looks very cool. Okay, let's take this pen out of its case again. We'll open it up and you can see here, there's this case. Let's set this aside. So there is the case and then this opens up. I know I showed this before, but just to get another look at it and then the pen slides out. In regard to some size comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with a Pilot Vanishing Point. And here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. And here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. And then in regard to a couple other pens, here it is with a Leonardo Momento Zero. I believe that's the Mango. And here it is with a 3776 from Platinum, the Carnelian Red. And then finally, here it is with a Diplomat Elox. Okay, I mentioned I would show you how to disassemble this pen. And that's where this little uh, red piece here, we'll call it a knock, comes into play. Um, what happens is you push this down and then you can remove this particular piece right here. Um, I found it almost easier to do it. You could almost do it with one hand here to where you push it and then it can just fall right out into your hand. And then this piece here releases. And then we have the spring. And then we have the vanishing point nib unit. And then that inserts here and that it does utilize the little guide pin here so that it can only go in in that one direction. Uh, same here, there's a little guide pin. Well, actually I put the spring in first. Then we have the guide pin here. And then in putting this back, you have to be a little careful because you hold this down and now it's kind of spring tension. So you don't want to let that go and let this fly across the room. And now it's put back together again. Here we go with the writing sample for the Leo design. FPX-1. And this here is a medium uh, gold nib. It's the uh, 14 karat gold nib of the Pilot Vanishing Point. And the ink that I'm using today is Pilot Hiroshizuko And this is Yamabudo. This is what the color looks like. Uh, you know, it's one of my favorite inks. Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to Califolio and Ternopil. Uh, and then here it is with Private Reserves Plum. The Roshizuku bottles are fantastic. I know it's sloshing around in here, but uh, you know I'm probably only about like a third left in this bottle. So uh, one of these days I'll be able to finish this, but uh, it's one of my favorite inks. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I'm not sure what I was doing with that B there. Um, I have found that this particular nib, uh, it does sing a little bit. 
you can get a little bit of line variation out of here, but just this particular nib kind of sings a little bit. In regard to ink flow, it's very decent on this particular nib. And in regard to reverse writing, it is a little scratchy, but lays down a nice fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, There you go. There's no issue with the feed keeping up. So there you have the Leo FPX-1. Um, it is a, a very unique design uh, that I think uh, brings something new to the table. You know, I do wish it had some way to be able to uh, have this pen be a little bit more portable, but the writing experience with the Vanishing Point nib is fantastic. Uh, and I, I think the looks are unique. So you want to check this out on the Leo Design website. Until next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.